All right, so this is just a quick, um, I guess, more of a tour than a how-to of the squeeze room. Um, and just a disclaimer before I start this, that this is just my design. Um, you can copy it if you want to, you can improve on it if you want to, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do whatever you want to with it. But if you build one of these, it's your baby. Um, so basically what I'm saying is that I don't want to be responsible for if you build it and it doesn't work, if you build it and you know, you have a structural failure or if you build it and you know, it's too tight or if it's too loose or you know, whatever. It's your problem if you build it and it doesn't turn out right. I don't really want to be responsible for that. So this is just why I'm saying this is a tour of it, not instructions of it, because this worked for me, but it might not necessarily work for you. So, without further ado, um, basically, the construction of it is two walls, pretty simple, they're four feet apart. Um, the walls are 12 feet long, and I built them using a 12 foot two by four across the top, don't mind the dog barking, and a 12 foot two by four across the bottom. And the studs are two by threes on centers. So that's a two by three, two by three at four, two by three at eight, and a two by three at 12. And then in between, I just have two by twos because I had these laying around and they aren't even connected to the plywood at all. They're just there to help keep the plywood from bowing out when it fills with air. And, um, that's basically it and so the two by twos are at two six and ten feet on the wall and like i said those are attached at the top and bottom on the two by four but they aren't attached to the plywood at all and the plywood i use is actually osb um it's just quarter inch osb um so i actually have some laying over here i can show you um it's just pretty cheap I think it's eight dollars a sheet at Lowe's. Um, it's just flimsy. I mean, it's not super flimsy, but it was adequate for this job. Um, it does just fine. And I put the uh, whatever you want to call it, the uh, finished side out and the unfinished side in because the unfinished side is obviously protected by tarps. And I do intend to paint the outside of this, but. That probably won't happen until Halloween. Um, and then, so each wall is supported by three stakes at the bottom, and they're just tacked on with a single screw each. And that's just to help keep the bottom of the wall from sliding out whenever this is inflated because there's a lot of tension in here pushing outwards on both sides. So I didn't want the bottom like sliding out from under itself and then the top kind of falling over. Um, so that's why there are three stakes there. Those are just uh, fence stakes, and you can find them in the garden section at Lowe's. And then the top of the wall is supported by two 10-foot 2x4s. Um, these were mainly used, I don't believe they really do much as far as structural support at this point, because if I pick them up, it doesn't really seem to help. They aren't load-bearing, but I will leave them there just for the extra support. Um, however, they did help me with standing it up because I'm a single person that does my haunt. So I had these laying stretched out on the ground. So you can imagine this wall laying down here, like coming down here, over here, up here. And then I had these two by fours attached to the top and they came down further from this. So as I stood this up, they kind of gradually came up and every time I let go of it, they would catch. So that way I could readjust my grip as it went up. So that was helpful. Um, and then the other wall is the exact same thing. It's just mirrored to that one. Um, two by three, two by three, two by three, two by three, two by two, two by two, two by two, and the 12 foot two by four at the top, 12 foot two by four at the bottom, 10 foot two by four support, 10 foot two by four support. And then inside here, I have a two by two support and it's four feet across. It's probably a little bit more than four feet across because I believe it's four feet from center to center. I could be wrong about that. Um, and then there's two more 
right here in the middle to support the blower fan. And then there's another one at the end to support the end. And then, um, as you can see, this whole thing is pretty darn sturdy. I mean, it has a sway back and forth of maybe about two inches, but you don't want to build things completely sturdy. Anyways, it will flex in the wind, but, you know, it's not going to collapse under its own weight or anything like that. Um, now, if I were building this again, and I will probably change this, I would highly, highly recommend using two blowers and not one. I have a really high velocity motor, so I it's powerful enough to do both of the airbags. However, it's really hard with this to get both airbags to be the same tension. So for instance, this left one likes to be a lot tighter than the right one. And so if I plug up the hole in the left one a little bit, then suddenly the right one's a lot tighter than the left one, and so on and so forth. So it's really kind of frustrating because it's hard to get them equal and even. And if you don't have it even, then when you're walking through it, this one's really tight, so it's actually pushing you almost into this hard wall over here, which is not what you want. You want to be suspended between the two airbags. So anyways, um, I would definitely use two air blowers, one over here sitting on the ground, and one over here sitting on the ground, and just use air vents as needed to loosen them up or tighten them up. Um, rather than one. So that's something that I will be changing come Halloween time. Um, anyways, the tarps that I used are actually just cheap, like, uh, vinyl tarps. Um, there's nothing really special about them. They're just like what you use to cover, like, firewood or whatever. Um, they're adequate. Um, if you, I am working, I'm, I mean, Anybody that knows about what I do knows that I'm 20 years old and I am unemployed and I fund this all myself. This is my job, so I have to kind of cheap out where I can. So that's why I'm using tarps for the air pillows. I mean, if you can afford it, I would definitely recommend getting um, like professional ones because you can buy professional ones on eBay, I believe, for, oh, I want to say, for like the 12 foot, it's like $7.99, which isn't really too bad and it comes with the blowers and everything so it's actually a pretty good deal but I just didn't have the budget for that this year so I'll hopefully be able to upgrade to that next year but for this year I'm just using tarps um, so these were 12 yeah, were, yeah there were 12 by 18 tarps I had to cut a few feet off of the end because they were a little bit too long because this is this is a 12 foot long squeeze tunnel um, and so basically how I attached them was I started at this end with each one and I have a, a two by three furring strip here, which you can see that if I pinch it off, it's just a two by three furring strip from Lowe's. And um, I put the tarp, like I wrap the tarp around so that nobody would get caught on the strip here because I'm gonna put a tarp over top and kind of stretch it over this. I didn't want anybody to get like caught on this or get a splinter from it and complain. Um, so that's how I did that, and then as you can see, I put, sorry about the sun, I put the end up there, the end down here, and the middle in the middle. And then from there, I kind of intermittently scrunched up, but evenly scrunched up the, um, the tarp, because you don't want it tight, otherwise there's no bag, it's just gonna be a tarp spread across the wall. Um, so anyways, you wanna leave like about, Two feet on either side so it's like if you've got a 12 foot long wall you want probably 16 feet in length so that'd be 12 feet plus two feet out on this side two feet out on that side and it's eight feet tall so i use a 12 foot tall tarp because it allows two feet out on the bottom two feet out on the top so it can actually form a pillow rather than just being tight against the wall so you gotta accommodate for that um so the tarp will be longer than your wall and so when it's longer than the wall, you gotta kind of come through and just uh, fold it over on itself a bunch of times to get to get it uh, all laying down on the wall and pinched down. And then across the top here, I did not roll it down, so it's a little bit clearer what's going on here. Um, so it's just the, um, once again, sorry about the sun. Um, it's just the uh, tarp with a board tacked over it. I did tack it down about every six inches just to make sure that the tarp didn't rip down out of it. 
because there is a lot of pressure, especially at the top. Um, and here, let's see, this one might be easier, yeah. Um, and as you can see, what I mean by that is that as it goes along, there are these like creases in it where I kind of pinched it together. And as you go along, you just kind of have to judge that yourself as you're putting it on, how much to pinch together. And as you do that, it kind of just takes up more and more of the tarp until you use up all that tarp length. And um, so it's, it's really pretty simple. You just kind of have to do some trial and error, which is what I did, but I built this in two days, so it's not that bad. But then again, I've been known to build things really fast, so don't feel bad if it takes you longer, I guess. Um, and so that's about it. Um, I did have vent holes cut in each one down here. They're a four inch diameter hole, but I wound up covering them over again because I didn't need them. But once I install the two blowers rather than the one, those will come in handy because I can start using them to let air out and retention the pillows individually. And just to show you how this all works, um, we'll plug it in. Oh, I'm sorry about the horrible handheld camera work. I have an iPhone. So it's relatively loud, especially at first. And as you can see, they just start to inflate fairly slowly.
for your yard quickly too, but once again, it was kind of a banner with two motors rather than one. Um, but from what I can tell, I got a little group of people out here to try it out, and um, we sent through one person right after another, and it was able to keep up with the crowd, like one person running after another, just because it was playing one after another fast enough that it could, it could really keep up with the crowd, so that's what I was worried about, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if anybody has any questions, let me know in the comments and I can get back to you there and I'll make a follow-up video if anybody has any bigger questions that need answered. So, yep, that's it.